Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about the potential entry of the polar vortex into the northern United States. This could bring extremely cold temperatures to the eastern United States coming up in the near future. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, I'd also highly recommend that you check out our very exciting store in the description and in the pinned comment down below, and also our very awesome Patreon page where we're actually going to be making an update for that snowstorm going on throughout the day today. So if you're curious about that, I highly recommend you check that out in the description and in the pinned comment down below. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think this polar vortex will actually enter the United States, or do you think it'll just be very cold but won't really fully enter in? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now, let's get straight into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look at our GFS temperature anomalies, and this is actually going to be for the coming days. This is going to be kind of 7 p.m. tomorrow, Saturday. Uh, and you, as you can see, there is some colder than normal temperatures down there for the southeast and warmer than normal temperatures for the northeast, north central United States. And that's been the trend throughout the earlier portion of January, which is exactly what I've been forecasting to happen in January. The earlier portion, the southeast would hold on to some of that cold and then the, no the more northern portions would be warm. Uh, we're about to see a big switch up. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to move on towards about the 13th where we're going to see a similar pattern and then we're going to really begin to see it come to a change. All right, now here we are taking a look at about 7 a.m. there on Wednesday, January 13th. And as you can see, it's still a very, very similar pattern here. Uh, we have some colder than normal conditions set up over the southeastern United States, the south central United States, and then just very warm for the northern United States, especially the north central United States. This has, again, been pretty much the trend throughout the month of January, but we're about to see a giant change to this, okay? So let's just move forward towards about 7 a.m. on Friday, January 15th. Again, if you watched my January forecast just about a week ago, I made a I made a prediction about the fact that around the 15th, we would see a big switch up in the pattern. And here we are. We can see that there is some cold air connecting from northern Canada all the way down through the uh, upper Midwest of the United States. And what we're going to see as we move towards about 7 a.m. on Saturday is that fully fully enters into the southeastern United States, also bringing colder than normal conditions for the Ohio, the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, and also the Mid-Atlantic as well. Uh, and then by the time we reach about 7 a.m. on Tuesday, well, a b another big warm-up enters into the eastern United States, uh, and then we see some cold behind it. So we're going to kind of see a, a little bit of a different pattern set up. Again, it's 7 a.m. on Tuesday, January 19th. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on towards where we're going to begin to see that very major cooldown or potentially polar vortex enter into the United States. So right behind that big warm-up is an even bigger cool-down, as you can see. The southeast is still holding on to a lot of cooler than normal conditions. It, that has been the trend throughout January, and I expect January to go that way pretty much the entire way. The Gulf states up through the mid-Atlantic definitely taking a look at colder than normal conditions uh, overall, really, just the entire month. But look at those purples and those darker blues entering into North Dakota and Minnesota. That is the very potent arctic air that's going to make its way down into the united states let's take this to about 7 a.m on thursday january 21st and take a look at that far below normal temperatures up there for the upper midwest the ohio valley the great lakes the northeast all of these regions are taking a look at again just far below normal temperatures that is very potent within those kind of deeper blue purplish shades that's where you're at about 15 to 30 degrees below normal Fahrenheit and then also we have kind of those magenta shades there showing up for some regions of Canada and the upper Midwest that's 30 to 45 degrees below normal uh, Fahrenheit which is just extremely below normal temperatures very very uh, cold pattern potentially coming up now as you can see by about the 24th this is about 1 a.m. on the 24th of January we see a warm-up finally uh, re-enter the eastern United States and then look behind it though we have another massive cool down there for the central United States uh, but that's the very end of the model run you're going to want to take that with a grain of salt the one important thing to note here is that these models are calling for consistent cold arctic outbreaks entering into the United States time and time again this January very very interesting so we get a little bit of a southeast ridge which really has not been as predominant as we thought it would be this winter uh, we haven't seen a lot of that at all 
Uh, but again, that very potent cold cooldown is potentially making its way in. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at those teleconnections. Take a look at why this is happening. And then we're going to get a little bit of a different opinion from a much longer range model that will take us all the way to February. All coming up in just a moment. So first off, here is our Arctic Oscillation, or our AO. Uh, and as you can see, this stays below that black line. That means we're going to be in a negative AO likely throughout at least the 19th, if not further than that. So we're taking a look at at least 12 days uh, from the time I'm making this video of negative AO conditions, which allows for Arctic air to really break away from the Arctic Circle and dive down into other regions, uh, including Russia, Europe, United States, anywhere basically surrounding the Arctic regions. Um, so that's a really good sign at cold coming in. Really, really good sign. Now let's take a look at our North Atlantic Oscillation. And this one you also want to be below that black line. And as you can see, it does stay below that black line at least through the 23rd here according to the European Ensemble model. A very, very good model here. Uh, so it's very good sign at cold and snow in the eastern United States to see this below that black line. And then our PNA. Now this one you want to be above that black line, and as you can see it is until about the 18th. That means cold in the east, warm in the west. Uh, towards the end of that though, as you can see after the 19th, that goes negative. And actually what that means is that it's encouraging colder air in the western United States. So I think there is going to be a flip at some point where we see most of the colder air make its way further west. And some of that warmer air come into the east. And that's if that plays out exactly that way. But the models really have trended at that positive PNA coming to an end around the 20th. Uh, but that gives us plenty of time for cold air and snow in the eastern United States. So the good news here is everybody's going to get their fair share. All right. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at two more models to close out the video. We're going to take a look at the GFS ensemble model, not on teleconnections, but on the temperature anomalies map. And then we're going to take a look at our CFS uh, weekly model, and we're just going to take a look at what it has all the way through the beginning of February. All of that is coming up in just a moment. All right, so we're taking a look at around the 14th of January here, the very, very end of Thursday, January 14th. And as you can see, it's really just very warm around the United States. Now, keep in mind, this is an ensemble model, so it really spreads out those temperature anomalies. I'm sure there is some colder areas in there, especially the southeast and the Gulf states, uh, but this model is really just generalizing a lot of areas. But by the time we reach the, the 20th or around the 19th there, that's going to be a Tuesday, you can see that we really enter just a cold in the east, warm in the west type pattern. Again, negative AO, negative NAO, positive PNA, Every single time you're going to get a pattern like this in those types of conditions. And by the time we reach the 24th, it's a very similar pattern. So we're going to stick around with a pattern like that according to the GEFS model. Very, very interesting. Let's take a look at our CFS model now. This is our CFS daily model. There's a monthly and a daily CFS model. This is the daily one. So we can get a lot smaller time frames with this one. So this is going to be the 10th through the 15th. So this upcoming five-day period that we have coming up. Again, look at that. South and or sorry, cold in the south for portions of the Gulf states, the southeast. Let's move it towards the 15th through the 20th, and it's a lot of the same that does spread a little bit further north and for further east there, uh, but generally a lot of the same. But by the time we reach the 20th through the 25th, it really spreads to where there's a lot of cold there in the eastern United States spread around, um, and we do see some warmer than normal conditions for the central United States, some out there for the west. Uh, it gets really confused with elevation. I've noticed this model does a really bad job with the elevation. You can see there's just kind of like yellows and blues spread all over the place. Um, so let's take a look. Let's move towards the very, very end of January and through the very, very beginning of February here. And as you can see, this is January 29th through February 3rd. And we're still in a cold in the east, warm in the west pattern. Really, guys, this, this winter so far has really overperformed for the eastern United States. We've had one very massive snowstorm already. Uh, it's been near normal temperatures. You can't ask for much better than that. And it looks like it's going to get a lot better for cold and snow lovers uh, through the second half of January. So very, very exciting pattern coming up here. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think that this snowstorm that's coming up early next week potentially is going to occur? And Zeta Derv said this snowstorm will likely happen, but the exact track isn't known. Uh, I know I pick Zeta Derv almost every single time, but I'm telling you, 
that Zeta Derv does the best job at just pinpointing exactly what I'm asking and answering it very directly. And that's just perfect for the comment of the day because it's short and straight to the point. If you guys want to be featured on the comment of the day, uh, take notes, guys. Take notes. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Sebastian Tao, John Bembenek, Justin Quantrell, James Wade, Dovi Nagel, Alan Balemo, Adam S., Larry LePan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Cherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Terry Curtis, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Callan Manhart, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Alicia Davis, and Mark J. If you would like to be on this patron end screen, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comment down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.